bare knuckle boxers, gangsters, drug dealers. I mean, you wouldn't want to stay around theirs, would you? Well, guess what? I got an invite. I'm moving in with some of the country's most dangerous men so we can find out how they sleep at night. And judging by this mob, there's going to be tears before bedtime. Sometimes it feels like the television and newspapers are full of nothing else. Tonight, another shooting, another victim. Two teenagers have been stabbed to death. It's the latest in a series of shootings and stabbings in the air. Stop, stop, no. It seems to me that violent street crime has hit a crisis point. Now, are the streets really awash with guns and knives? Yet another murder scene in Britain. It ended with an 18-year-old being stabbed to death. Now, I've got two daughters. 13 year old and a two year old. And I'm going to try and find out what kind of Britain they're going to be growing up in. I'm going to spend a few days on the streets of Brixton to see if all the Daily Mail headlines are true. And I'm moving in with a former gangster with a rap sheet that reads like something from an Eminem lyric. Mugger, bank robber, crack dealer, you name it, he's done it. Until just a few years ago, he was right in the thick of it. I mean, he was part of one of Brixton's most feared gangs. I'm not meeting just another hoodie. Elijah Kerr was the top boy of the PDC, the Pill Dem crew. PDC was known for, like, robbing, probably drug dealing, and a few other things. It was kind of feared. Some people feared us, some people loved us, some people hated us. It was just, it was, it was just a different, it was a crazy feeling. Elijah was a boy of 12 when his career of violent crime began. I might like went to a shop, rob someone, kicked him and hit his head. That would be normal to me. If you get in my way, then you're going to get kicking or something because if I know if I get caught, I'm going to prison. So don't get in my way. This whole hoodie generation thing frightens the life out of me. I don't understand it. Coming from where I come from, there was gangs around, but never to this level. I thought that black Scarface and all my friends was with me and they were doing the same things. So they thought they were black Scarfaces as well, so we've got like 10 black kids that fit their black Scarfaces. I don't really quite know whether I'm going to have any sort of connection with this guy at all. I don't know. I mean, it's, a, it's another, another world for me. I've no idea what this is going to be like or what's going to happen. But I want to know more about life on the streets of Britain today. How does someone end up as a gang leader by the age of 15? And why do you choose this gangster life? A life that for most doesn't last that long. And it's at a makeshift memorial for another young life lost that I've arranged to meet Elijah. Just a mile or so from where he lives, flowers and tributes lie for the most recent young victim of a fatal stabbing. Reading the messages makes me think just how pointless all these deaths are. It's not long before Elijah arrives, and he's not alone. Cut the pals right round him, didn't expect he would have been on his jack. And he said that ex-gang leader, what'd you expect? He introduces me to Maddox and Michael, both former members of the PDC. Oh, this is a bit strong. First meeting with you. Yeah, boy. Normal, isn't it? You see that everywhere. Like, you see that on lampposts, on street corners. Yeah. That's what's normal now. Like, I think before people would have been, that would have been shocking before, but now it's just like people probably walk past this every day and it's nothing. A 16-year-old was stabbed to death at this spot just one week before I made this film. That could have been me there. That could have been any of us here. That could have been, that could have been me right there. So that, the gold flowers could be for me. We've been in fights like that where that could have been, I could have got stabbed like that, or, or something could happen, I could have got shot in the head or something. Like people were getting stabbed and shot, but it wasn't 
as highlighted as it is now. Like I remember, I remember someone getting shot, shot back in the days, and it wasn't the news. Only we knew about it. Like it was just like a normal thing. Like okay, got shot, all right. Okay. I was gonna die around the 25, 24, 25 years old. I thought I was gonna die around that age. Or like I'm gonna go to prison, probably come out, have like four more years to live. That's, that was my attitude. That's a mad mentality to have that to accept death. That was my that, that, that was my attitude. And I just like to say, you know what? Fuck the system. Fuck everyone. I don't care about no one. Fuck it. It's hard to get my head around what he's telling me. He didn't seem to care about anything. Accepting that you're going to die in your 20s. How on earth did he get like that? It looks like I might not get a chance to get to know Elijah Kerr. I've not even been with him for an hour, and he and his two former gang members are stopped by the police. So I've uh, obviously just met up with Elijah. I've not been with him for more than, well, not even half hour yet. I'm following him around, and he's been tagged. I've got a couple of chaps around him. The old Bill have pulled him already. Oh shit. Well, another old Bill motor's turn up. I don't know what's going on here. It's a nightmare. It makes me think, am I staying under the same roof as a former gangster, or an active one? I don't know what's going on. I'm hoping it's all going to be sweet. I hope he ain't got about fucking 20 guns in his motor. We're fucked. Coming up, things start getting a bit on top with the police. Got more old Bill and old fucking else. Bang on us. That's just been, that's no need for that. You just been. I'm on the scene of another stabbing. That's just normal, isn't it? It's not, it's not like a wow factor. Stuff happens all the time. And I turn my hand to the rap game. Get hold of that. Fucking, I've, I've upset myself. I've got, I've got all emotional with it. I'm deep in the heart of Brixton, South London. Living with Elijah Kerr, one of the town's most notorious former gangsters. I just don't understand the hoodie generation, so I'm here to find out how the gangster fantasy has become a reality. Getting involved in a dangerous and deadly lifestyle isn't my idea of fun. I remember someone getting shot, shot back in the days and it wasn't the news. Only we knew about it, like, it was just like a normal thing, like, got shot, alright? He says he's a reformed character, but I'm not so sure. Because less than an hour after meeting him, he and two of his former gang members, who he was driving with, have been stopped by the old Bill. I don't know what's going on. I'm hoping it's all going to be sweet. I hope he ain't got about fucking 20 guns in his motor. We're fucked. I'm just glad I'm not sitting in their motor. Usually I'll be driving about with them, but uh, we decided to take the other car. Thank fuck. There are three police cars and five officers. I think this might be serious. Why do you think lady come? And she will come. Because right, right this car's been driven illegally. This young man hasn't got a driving license, and that means he hasn't got a lot of insurance. That's that's no need for always got something to say all the time. It's a tense situation. The banter isn't friendly. Just because they know us, they say this what happens all the time. Same. I was going to say I've been with you. I've been with you 20 minutes. Exactly. It's on you already. There you go. Got more old Bill and old and else. Bang on us. All the cars that we own, they're high risk, so they're known for like drugs, guns and all that. So obviously we get stopped all the time. They've not found any drugs or guns, but Maddox, who is driving, doesn't have a valid license or insurance. But it feels like there's more to this than meets the eye. It's more about who they are than just a traffic violation. The old Bill are obviously keeping a close eye on anyone with PDC connections. Why is we not on the floor lying down and all that? That's <laughs> all we need. This is a mad one, this one. This is, this is mental. Within the fucking first hour of meeting him, it's on us. The old Bill are on us. I mean, this is geezer that's out of crime now as well, apparently. I mean, fuck me, imagine what it was like when he was running around fucking robbing people. They claim they're legit. But I'm not sure that the police are so convinced. This is what we have to go through every day. Every day. We're trying to change our lives. We've got jobs. Like, we're looking after our sons. And this is what's happening. We have to do with attitude like that. That's why nobody deals with the police when they're asking for information. Because they're doing things like this. They can't, they can't come to us with trust because they're doing things like this. 
You understand? This happens every day and the youths all around here, they see it. I'm seeing for myself just how tense it gets on the streets between those involved with the PDC and the law. This is the thing about the police and the fact they're so not from this area. They ain't really got a clue about living on a tough estate like this. So it's hard for them to have any connection with them, I would have thought, to talk to them on a level. Because they're never going to be able to understand. They're just there to nick them. For whatever reason that may be. And I'm not knocking the police, you know what I mean? The police have got a tough jobs to do, especially in London. But um, it's about trying to get a balance and trying to get some sort of relationship with the people that live on the estate. That's how you make it a better place, I would have thought than making them the enemy. Welcome to the hood. Welcome to South London. <laughs> Welcome to the state. So after all this, I'm left wondering, am I about to spend a couple of days with a reformed character or an active gangster? The first generation of the hoodie, who to me, sounds like a really nasty piece of work. It was fast, high risk, pushing, shoving, grabbing people down the floor. You kicked him in his head. Yeah, but I needed to get round him, innit? So what else am I supposed to do? That, to me, that wasn't dangerous at that time. That was just normal. The people that was, they were moved in it to, they must have thought, what the, the hell? They must, they must have been, like, scared out of their, their pants. We got to that kind of stage where we got that kind of power on the streets. I'm with Elijah on the streets he once terrorised. He's taking me to where he grew up. His mother ran away from his first home in Birmingham to escape his violent father and was left to bring up four kids here on the notorious Angeltown estate. It seems like quite a nice place today, but as Elijah explains, 20 years ago it sounds like a madhouse. At that time I hadn't seen an estate before. I had music pumping out speakers, yeah. weed was out, splitting, like everyone was out. It was drug dealers about, it was, just, it was like, I was like, fucking hell. Elijah's new surroundings were far from normal. Their house had previously been a crack den. Because it was a crack house, the lot of dealers were still like, hanging about. See, there were those times when we was in the park playing and we was kid, being kids. Our surroundings are like, fight, people fighting, a lot of um, robbery talk, car thefts. From there, it just went like, it went downhill. Barely out of short trousers, Elijah's head was turned by the local gangsters who surrounded him, even though he knew it was wrong. Most kids will look up, everything your dad does, yeah, you look and think, oh, we just have my dad. But when you ain't got that now, then you look around the corner, you look to this guy. This guy's got a drug dealer, got all the cars, got all the girls. I want to be like him then. So that kind of made us aspire to want the flashy stuff, the money, the girls, all that stuff. I'm saying, because we, we was all money motivated. Girls and the money and the cars. Um, that whole kind of lifestyle, and saying that was appealing to me at the time. That's what you, you want those things. So crime provided a way for them to get what they wanted, and they formed a gang called the PDC, the Pildem Crew. Pildem is like a, it's a Jamaica, Jamaican patwa term for like robbing, taking. But like, yeah, we're the Pildem Crew. We take what we want, we do what we want. His crime career began with burglaries and muggings. I was scared to rob, like, rob no one, young, old, whatever colour, any place, any time, I didn't care. Aged 14 and still at school, he and the other members of the PDC soon graduated to shop and bank robbery. Elijah explained to me the simple method they used, which was known as steaming. All you do, you fly over the counter, grab the money and get the fuck out of here. I can hardly believe at the age of 14 he was robbing banks. But then again, it wasn't exactly Ocean's Eleven. All, all that movie stuff, nah, nah, nah. No papers on the table the night before and all that. It was none of that. It was a thing where we walk in the high road, oh, let's do that one. Let's do that one. Or let's, oh, no, let's do that one over there. It was, it was an on-the-spot thing. So you wouldn't even scope the gaff first. Nah, you go, right, nah. that bang over there. Yeah, like, we'll, see, if me and you was hitting, I would say, fuck it, look, there's Bartley's there coming. Let's go, let's go, let's go and do it. They were boys getting involved in a man's game. They weren't very sophisticated, but they were very successful. I'm amazed when he reveals to me his biggest haul. He managed to grab 15 grand. He was just 15 years old. So where did you keep your money? Where did you stash it? I mean, it's a lot of dough, that 15 bag. The safest place for a young kid is on his bed, isn't it? You think that's a, that's like a, that's the safest place in the planet, on your bed. You think that no one is gonna go on? That's true. 
As we walk the streets of Brixton together, I can see that he's clearly a face that's well known around these parts. Not surprising when you consider he was running one of the town's most notorious gangs. If you see the police, Warner Brother. Warner Brother. <laughs> Got it? Yeah, strong. Strong words. At the height of his criminal days, clothes were a way for Elijah to show off his gangster status. It didn't matter what they looked like, it was all about what they cost. Look at that fucking thing. Like, it, that's man. the stuff I was wearing back in the days. That, that's just yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Was, I didn't like the stuff most stuff I was wearing. Yeah. Like, bride, some of them was ugly, but yeah, it was yeah. Moschino and it cost like £700. 700 pounds. quid, you think? Yeah, yeah, I'll have it. That's the thing. That's how it goes. He was seduced by the gangster lifestyle. He was a kid who had nothing, so he went out and took it, and it gave him a newfound status. It's like I had to prove something, prove that I was not going to be like an ordinary guy be a bum. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do something myself and, and so that meant robbing and terrorizing everyone and I'm gonna do it. Living the gangster lifestyle meant he was a regular at the Ministry of Sound, which in London in the mid 90s was the place to be seen. When I was a kid, I could never get in. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 well, see, I never let me in. A ever. lot of people wouldn't get in, but cause we were, I think it was the way we was dressed. Yeah, yeah. I was in Ministry of Sound as well. One time someone gave me a spliff. Obviously, and then it was obviously I was smoking it, but it had that like, it had a crack in it. At that point there, money in my pocket, champagne, Gucci, glasses, crack. I thought it was like black scarface. So obviously, and all my friends was with me, and they were doing the same thing. So they thought they were black scarfaces also. We've got like ten black kids that fit their black scarfaces, and that's what we were doing, like living the life. You, you couldn't get any higher at that yeah, point. I mean, yeah, that's, that's the... it. I was I was at the top. He might have been at the top but it all came crashing in when at 16 he was caught in a botched robbery attempt. But it wasn't the probation centre this time, it was 18 months inside. Now I've never done any bird, but it's got me thinking. Actually we've got a lot in common, both from a, from a council estate. It's just that, you know, I obviously, you know, had the result where I had a, you know, an outlet, I had something to channel my energy into, which was the acting side of things. So I had a way out. I had a way out. He didn't. So the, it could have so easily been the same path that I took, really. And, uh, you know, it just makes me think about, you know, the other life that I could have had. I'm keen to see where Elijah lives and where I'll be staying tonight. So we head back to his gaff. It's no drug baron's mansion. In fact, it's a tiny one bedroom flat. He's never moved off the estate. And if he has stashed away any of his ill gotten gains, he's certainly not splashed out on the decor. In fact, he openly admits he spunked it all away. And I started thinking, oh, what was I doing this money? I started going back and thinking, okay, let me go back, rewind, rewind. Right, that Gucci thing was that much money, this was this. I paid, I bought that girl this, I brought this for that girl, I bought that ring, I bought this one. I'm calculating up and I'm thinking, oh, I spent a lot of money. Out of the back of the flat, I noticed some empty, boarded up houses. It's from there that Elijah's convinced the police have been watching him. I've seen old building there before, that's in there, look at my window. They knew that, I knew they was there. At least that's what that's fucking fine spot to watch yeah, as well, that, isn't it? Now the police don't waste their time watching any Tom, Dick or Harry, so he's clearly a major figure to them. Because if they weren't watching him at the back, they were smashing his door in at the front. I've noticed obviously the door's battered. What I'm saying? So how many times you had that kicked in? Well, that's been kicked in on well, well, five times. What with this and the incident with the old Bill earlier today, I'm not sure what to make of his reformed gangster story, nor do the police. The policeman said to me, oh, you, you got illegal now, yeah? No, 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 we're not having it. That's what he said to me. All my life I've been playing a cat and mouse with them. It's like, you're, these children, these children are playing together for so many years and you've had enough, like, I don't want to play no more. And they're, they're like, you can't do that. You, you, can't, you can't just leave the game, we've got to finish it. It's supposed to end up like, we're nicking you and you're like doing like life sentence or something. And then that's when we, that's when we finish. If I was a policeman and I was in their shoes, I'd probably be doing the same thing that they're doing. I'd probably like, he's doing something dodgy in the background. Once you're a criminal, always a criminal. But at the same time, because I'm not doing nothing, I haven't really got enough to worry about. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Is he still up to no good? Or is he a victim of police harassment? Should I feel sorry for him? Or is there no smoke without fire? After all, this guy's got a serious record. 
and it's got me thinking about those who have really suffered in all this. So I had to ask him how he felt now about the innocent victims of his crimes. Did you realise, you know, what you're doing is wrong? And you know you're doing wrong, that's for straight, obviously, because I'm not yeah. stupid, so we're not, I knew I was doing wrong, but I wasn't, you don't care, innit? Victims, who was, who was care about victims? I need to buy some new Nike Air Max, so you what are you talking about the victims for? You got money, like, it's, I need it. So and if you came away as well, then I'm gonna stamp in your head or something, or I'm gonna punch you. So it wasn't like, uh, that's, that was just, I felt like I was allowed to do that. Because I'm a criminal and we're allowed to do that, we're allowed to take from you. And the police don't catch us then we're gonna get away with it. Because that's what criminals do. So that's, that was my whole mentality. He was a cold-hearted character. And he makes no excuses for what he did. I get the feeling that nothing would have got in his way. I'm struggling a bit to connect the Elijah I've met, who's friendly and charming, with the ruthless gangster. Spaghetti on toast, mate. <laughs> bit, of pepper, bit of black pepper. That's all yeah, but, uh, A man's yeah. kitchen can be revealing. Elijah's is no exception. There's some saying, there you go. Weird stuff, there. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. The unused George Foreman grill was a giveaway that we had something in common. <laughs> We're both useless at cooking. I mean, I'm shit at cooking. And when I've got my kids around me, it's like, I can't cook. It's like, I take, what do you want? You know, a bit of McDonald's and we can take, it's, it's embarrassing. There will be no lean or mean grilling for me here. So we headed out for dinner in a local restaurant, where we are joined by some of his friends. We ate well when we were relaxing, when Elijah got a phone call. Hello. Yo, what's happening? What, what happened? What happened? What happened on there? Yeah, for real. We're just when we left. Something was happening back on the Angel Estate. Once again, the police were involved. What's happening? Yeah, someone has got um, stabbed in, in the area when we just left. Coming up, we're on the scene of a stabbing. Oh, this fucking just uh, horrible feeling. And look out, Eminem. I'll make my debut as a rapper. No one fucking laugh. Why is this come from me up? I'm living and breathing the world of former gangster Elijah Kerr, south of the river in Brixton. And so far it's been some experience. This is a mad one, this one. This is, this is mental. I'm seeing a different London to the one I know. I'd felt the heat of the law on Elijah's estate when he was stopped by the old Bill. Welcome to the hood. Welcome to South London. It made me realise that I was running about with a geezer who had been a seriously dangerous criminal. A man who didn't let anything get in his way. I wasn't scared to rob, like, rob no one, young, old, whatever colour, any place, any time. I was just, I didn't care. As we sat in a restaurant eating dinner, it felt like things had calmed down. I couldn't have been more wrong. After all, it was Friday night in Brixton. While we were eating, Elijah received a phone call. Hello. There'd been another stabbing on the Angel Town estate very close to where he lives. I decided to go to the scene of the crime with Elijah. The second left here, not this one, the second one. We arrived to find the police investigating a stabbing that has happened just a couple of hundred yards from Elijah's front door. Elijah's gaff's just over there. And somebody right here, this little manor, has been stabbed up. I can see actually the blood over there, there's some blood. This is obviously the guy's trainer. And oh, it's fucking just a horrible feeling. All the old Bill are putting on their, putting their forensic suits on there, look, you know what I mean? Just a normal Friday night, I suppose, in Brixton. This ain't nothing new to nobody that lives around here. If you, as you drive around this estate, you clock that there's bits of tape just hanging off fences where, where it's taped off constantly. And obviously the old bill just pull it when it's sorted, but it's just hanging off. There's one up there, there's one around there. It's like this red tape here. This is Friday night in Brixton. Not even Friday night yet, Friday afternoon. 
that's just normal, isn't it? It's not. It's not like a wow factor. Stuff happens all the time. Like it's not like someone's been like shot yeah. outside my house before. Like this is the frightening thing. It's not. There's no wow factor to it at like, all. Other people see these side. These things only on the move on the movies and that. Yeah. And we see it all the time. I can't believe how immune they are to all this. And I'm amazed that the attack has occurred in full view of the CCTV cameras. The camera over there, which obviously over looking that. Fucking, I'm not being funny. What? Whoever uh, done that is what? stupid. Not, uh, stupid, just no fear, don't, don't yeah, care. Yeah. Makes no. absolutely no odds. Nobody cares no more. You might have upset me to an extent that I cannot do nothing because we'll react immediately and I'll just have to attack you, whether I like it or not, be near the cameras or not. It all feels so extreme. Stabbing someone over an argument, to take someone's life, and then have 10 or 15 of your own taken away doing a prison sentence. What makes someone do that? Who are these people? It hits home how real it is, you know what I mean? It's such a, you know, for them it's just walk off a duck's back, but, um, I mean, this is, you know, this is the real deal, man. There's no, there's no bollocks here. I would have got more reputation for making more money, but now you get, I think you get more big reputation, it's the more violent you are. So the more stabbings or probably the more shootings you are, the more you're the big man. We're off to meet some lads that Elijah knows from another estate in nearby Stockwell. Okay, we'll okay, speak to some of the local okay. lads out there. Okay, okay, a few of the young boys, yeah. yeah. Same. There's left into this estate coming up here. I want to ask those who live on these streets why violence and stabbings are becoming an everyday thing. It's hard to believe it's just about status and making a name for yourself. Do so you think it's turning into now? It's just this whole idea of everyone running around stabbing each other and it's just over, really, it's over nothing, isn't it? Well, yeah, really. Really and truly, yeah, but me like being caught up in it. But it's mostly like the youngers, like the little ones, like I think they have something to prove, like. They what, feel as young as what, like? like 14, 15. 15 you know, like they might think they have something to prove so they can roll with the older ones. But that's probably about it. Like they probably just take it out of hand, innit? Like yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. Oh, they get respect from the older ones. Like, so you, you boys don't feel the pressure that you gotta run around with knives on you? Not even, not even, tell the truth. It's just a rare thing then Elijah, I ain't being funny. Yeah, I mean, yeah what what you find, yeah, what you find, yeah. A lot of the a lot of the, the guys now they, they're kinda of, they're kinda of seeing that you know what, it's not even worth it. Because at the end of the day, what what everyone's getting involved in and fighting over and beefing over is just something I'm stupid. That's not everyone's like that, I'm saying. So there's these are the sensible ones out of a bunch of a lot of lunatics. And if they want to get involved, they get involved in it. Yeah. Some people don't want to get involved, then they don't get involved. So yeah. that's how it is really. Yeah. It's up to them at the end of the day, way I see it. The stakes have been raised to a whole new level. And it's really, really frightening. Once it was fists and fighting, now it seems to be knives and death. I'm baffled as well. I'm, like, everyone else, I'm baffled. Before, like, robberies would be like, you rob someone and you get the hell out of there, rob. But now they, you rob someone and you stab them to death. Like, and then, and then I understand that, for like a mobile phone. I'm thinking, wait, then you just kill someone for like 30 quid. Like, that's, that's, so it's, got, it's gone to another level now. Like. It's late, I'm knackered, and I'm glad to be back at Elijah's place. He lives alone, but I can see the flat is obviously equipped for kids. God, that's a mad looking rocking off you got there. Yeah. What's all that about? Yeah, done that in community service, innit? What? Um, yeah. <laughs> what, what? Done it. Were you, were you made it? Yeah, I made it from like a, from a big block of wood. Oh, right. in that respect, it's not a mad looking rock. It looks, it looks, yeah. it looks great. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Next year, it is a really yeah. good job. That's what I'm saying. How long did it take you to make that? Done, how many hours did I do? I don't know. I think I had like 120 hours or something like that. So I was like. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> Once a week for, for, for seven hours. <laughs> he stretched that right out then. So yeah, like, yeah. The, the, the toys belong to his three children. Just about eight months. From three different one, mothers. One week. The kids are two, two and a half, two, and one years old. All the same. Close. Free clothes like that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, do you have time to get out of my house around the other gaff? That's what I'm saying. That doesn't. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> hell, man. <laughs> uh, that's beautiful. I've got no comment. No more that's of that. Funny. That's funny. <laughs> Finding no out he has three kids from three different women on top of everything else that's happened is more than enough for me for one day. You know, this whole thing about the stabbing, 
that happened 30 seconds away from where we are now, that mm. shook me up a little bit because it really does it on. It really is real. So, a lot to take in, you know. I need a few hours kip and then uh, crack on again with him tomorrow. Next morning, and it's time for breakfast. You know what I'd like? A nice bit of Eggs Benedict, right? With a, nice, a nice waffle, right? With a bit of a <laughs> poached steak. You'll be lucky. No way. <laughs> I can't cook, so basically, yeah, cereal is like, cereal is like a hot toss. It's Frosties. Or Frosties. See, you don't, see, that's what I'm saying. Look at that. I can't, look at that. I can't make cereal. That's what I'm saying. That's so you know it's, this is serious stuff. No, you've done well, yeah? Done well, done well. well, done well. After breakfast, we head back to the scene of the stabbing. I want to see the aftermath of the incident. That's the blood, that's the blood over there. Yeah, yeah, got it. It's a fucking pool of blood, that, isn't it? This was an incident the police had described as minor. It's not a nosebleed, is it? Let's be honest. I mean, how can that be minor? If you're not you tried telling the, the geezer's mother that's minor. It's minor, yeah. You know what I mean? Why don't they clean that shit up? Yeah, they didn't clean it up as well. I was just about to say that. Yeah, just let me clean kids up. kids playing around here, do you know what I mean? Yeah, he's it's left like... it there. No, I don't want to get away from that. It's just... The same kind of dirty, yeah. Like, oh, fuck that. It's rank. Thankfully, the victim survived. But it seems to have reached the stage where as long as nobody dies, it's a minor incident. By a strange coincidence, Elijah was going to bring me here anyway. This is the same part of the estate where he reached the peak of his criminal activity. Crack dealing. Well, he wasn't going to be a plumber, was he? After his release from prison for robbery at 17, he tried to go legit as a music events organiser, but it didn't work out. Got people saying to me, got bank account. I was like, what? Bank account for what? Like, what do you mean bank account? I don't you didn't have a bank, bank account. account. No, I was like, my money goes in my box. Like, my money goes in my room. And I don't need a bank account. So I didn't know about all this kind of stuff. So I was kind of, I said, you know what? This, this is it for me. I'm going to, I'm going to, I need to, I need to do something else. And I said, you know what? Drug game. Crime was what he knew, and the drug game proved to be highly lucrative. He was making like 500 pound a day to like two, three grand a day. Every really? Each individual was making, I was saying. Elijah and the PDC transformed the whole derelict block on the estate into a crack dealing business. One of the guys I sold drugs to, he went off, he was with a girl. And, and she came back and said to me, like, yeah, she was smoking all night, she died, she's dead. I was like, fuck, are you telling me that for? I was like, fuck. I was like, what the fuck? I said, what, what, what are you gonna buy? You wanna buy some more drugs? Now, I gotta be honest, he sounds like he was a total scumbag. I'm glad I'm meeting him now and not back then. He was blinded by money as the drug business provided the high life he desired. When we started making the money, it was out there, new trainers, living it, cars pulling up, it was so blatant. But that's, at the time, when the money started coming in, we weren't thinking. The money just started coming in too much. We, had, we was on the block counting money, and that three grand is out and open, count it, put it in the pocket. It was too open, way too open, way! The police had been watching them for three months. When Elijah was arrested, he was shown the surveillance video. They saw everything on the TV screen. I was like, fucking hell, they had the whole stuff, they had, I saw myself walk up and down the block, they was like, so who's that then? I was like, fucking hell, but I was like, no comment, no comment, no comment, and in my head I'm thinking, oh, I'm fucked. I can't help but think greed and arrogance was their downfall. The police had a watertight case. Elijah and 12 others were heading to prison. He would serve two years for his drug offences. On the inside, he decided that he would try the music business again. And he was going to do it with his best mate, waited. But with his best friend dead, and the prospect of a future spent in and out of prison, Elijah made a move that stunned the PDC. I said, I'm going to do something controversial. I'm going to use the same crew that we've got, the same element that we've been using to do drugs and robberies now. I'm going to do it into a record label form. Look. 
Unbelievably, the gang was going straight. And use the exact format we were using. Same guys, instead of that guy holding the gun, instead of that guy doing drugs, he's going to be the graphic designer. Instead of that guy doing that, I'm going to make him do the producer, production. Yeah, before we'd have got back of the drugs, we'd got back of the CDs, you see? Yeah. Oh. Oh. And I see for myself something else that has given him a focus for change. He's accepted Islam and prays at least five times a day. The more time I've been with him, listened to him and got to know him, the more I actually believe he's making a conscious effort to change and move further and further away from the kind of person he was. I've done lots of bad stuff in the past, so obviously I still have dreams about all that stuff. But I, have still, I still see like, people's face pop up and I think, who the hell is that? But obviously that's, that's like your subconscious, like, that's, saying, that's, like, that's things from your subconscious that you saw at the time, but because at the time you didn't understand what you was doing or you just didn't care, he wasn't affecting you. But now, you, now my mind's changed, like those things pop back up. I'm like, fuck, you know, like, so I, like, when I remember certain things, I think, fuck, you know, what was I doing? I, how I was living a couple of years ago, I, I should have been dead, enough, so I, I, every day I pray, I'm thankful for that, that I'm still here and I'll kind of change my whole ways and the record label's here now and all this stuff's going on for me now, so I say, you know what, I'm thankful for it. It's more thing as well for yourself, saying so you're kind of like ready for the day and you're focused. Some people might smoke a spliff yeah. and say, this makes me focus in the morning. Some people might Probably smoke. my method. Yeah. <laughs> some, people might, some people might have a snort like, oh, I'm fresh in the morning. Yeah, sleep. yeah that's me. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> me. <laughs> Shit. Coming up, the waiting's over. I'm going to spit some rhymes. Get hold of that. All right, it's back. <laughs> I'm in Brixton, South London, living with former street gangster Elijah Kerr, and I've had a mad couple of days. At first, I wondered if he really was a reformed character, as we felt the heat of the law. Quite over, he ain't got about 20 guns in his moat. I was with fat. Because he was a man who turned his hand to any crime. I need to do something else, and I said, you know what? Drug game. See, that meant robbing and terrorizing everyone, and I'm gonna do it. But after spending time with him, I've come to see that he now wants to be a face for all the right reasons. Having turned his gang, the once notorious PDC, into a record label. Yeah, and before we'd have got back of the drugs, we'd have got back of the CDs, you see? <laughs> Today I'm going with Elijah to the studio and on the way we stop to pick up one of the young rappers he's been working with. I'm introduced to KC, who's 19 years old and on a tag, awaiting trial on a charge of possessing an offensive weapon. The prospect of prison terrifies me, so how does he feel about it? Boy, obviously I don't want to be sitting in jail, and it's not. To me, it's not glamour. Some people want that. Some people is it true? Is it, some some, 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 some of these kids are they're quite. They, they don't mind. They, they like the idea of that. They think of, that it's going to make them a face. Now, a lot of people now, but they want something to talk about. They want people to know they've been in jail. Like give a little image. Like it's not really me. It's not what I want to do, in it. But so it's their mentality to have that, though, isn't it? To want to go to prison. It's the way it's to be banged up. But but then you come out and then you can rap about it or you can yeah, talk yeah, about it on the street talk. and that's. Do you know what I mean? That's like a fucking, that's a mad mentality to snap out of that. Mm. I'm about to see the new PDC in action. Are they as serious about music as they were about crime? They're producing a new track. And guess who's being roped in to make his rap debut? So I'm going to write a little introduction. Right, introduction. We're going to do eight bars each and we're going to do a song, track, and it's going to be a banger. I'm saying. Get to the concept though, living dangerously. I'm living in the hood, but life isn't all good. I've got problems, my life's been misunderstood. Stereotypes and my whole life has been a hype. I've seen guns in the night, crack on the pipe. London is trife ridden, the tension's getting higher. I'm feeling like I'm part of the business like Danny Dyer. Talk the best of us, and left scars on the rest of us. Pistol luck, I'll wait to see you in heaven, cuz. I'm impressed, they're good but the standard might be about to drop dramatically. It's my turn, and I'm far from relaxed about it. Shit in your pants, making my, uh, my debut. 
on the rap scene. I think it's about time. It's been a long time coming. Nearly 32 now. It's the time to express me, express me fucking self. What right, sweet has? No one fucking laugh. Right, this has come from the art. This goes out to all the South London boys, living it up, <laughs> living like kings in a concrete jungle. Respect to anyone who's lost their lives on the streets. Respect to anyone who's living dangerously. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. Get some of that shit. Yeah. Get some of that. Respect to myself. Fucking, I've, I've upset myself. I've got, I've got emotional around it. Upset myself. Fucking, I've upset myself. Get hold of that. Respect. Elias is trying to make a name for himself, but this time through music. Through crime he got a taste for the high life and he liked it. He clearly wants to be a face once again, but this time without breaking the law. I still want to buy Bentleys and I still want a big house on the beach and I still want to live nice. I still want people around me to live nice. I still want it, but we're going by it a different way this time. I'm saying so. I still like jewelry and I still like nice things, but definitely by a much more deserved way. And, and this time, when you get it now, you appreciate it more because I've worked hard for it. As KC takes to the mic, I see one of the next generation who wants to make a name for himself. On top of some don't stand. Destroy and rebuild the camp is what the team do. He's at a crossroads. He's facing the prospect of jail. But just like Elijah, I can see he has something about him. And crime isn't his only option. Pleasure, man. Fucking real pleasure. Good luck with everything. Well, there you go, yeah? I'm off to work, mate, in the youth club. Oh, yeah, Take listen, care. brother. I've nice been a fucking you, pleasure. I'll just find it fascinating. I really do. I mean, I stood up there and said three lines of dialogue, I was shitting me pants. They just fucking go, boom. And it's not just that, they're talking, it's, you know, it's coming from in here. It's like, it's like proper, they're talking about people that they know have died and it's like powerful stuff. And just to be able to express yourself like that, blow me away. I'm so impressed by the whole thing, I'll tell you. My time in Brixton with Elijah has come to an end. I've realized something positive has come out of his past. People listen to him because he's seen it, he's done it and got quite a few t-shirts. I've learned that you know, these kids need people like you around them because you've done it. You've done it, you've done the bird for it. You made a point, you don't lecture them. You can't lecture them. Yeah, you can't lecture them, no way. You listen to you Same. and you channel it in the right way. You can still make more money in the streets in one day than you can probably make in, in, in doing anything legal. But at the same time, that's, that's a short journey. I say that's, that's most of the time you end up dead or in prison. I can see a bigger dream right now, so it's me working hard and coming out of it is worth it. I say so I can see that the, what, we're, what we're working towards is going to be it's going to be much bigger than anything that can ever possibly happen in the streets. This goes out to all the South London boys, living it up, living like kings in a concrete jungle. Respect to anyone who's lost their lives on the streets. Respect to anyone. Who's living dangerously? PDC.